You know, it's funny, I've been starting these videos the exact same way for, I think, damn near three years now with the clap and then everything else. It's funny, I got a couple comments asking me uh, what my setup is. They're like, oh, your vocal sounds so good, and what's your setup? It's really funny because I feel like I'm the last person out there that's still using a GoPro Hero 4, as you can see here. Hero 4 Silver, <laughs> that's it, it's 1080p, uh, 30 frames a second, because I don't like doing 60 frames, it takes too long to export. And then I got the little task cam and the, and the mic, and that's it. It's super simple. Um, but what is going on, guys? We'll do the, the high-energy intro today for you, as usual. Uh, today, we're on the KTM RC390, of course, our giveaway bike. Let's start it up. I almost tripped. Are we in neutral? Side stand down? Come on, let's start up anyways. Uh... I am here, I don't even know where I am right now, but there's a nice little road that I take over here that's we're going to do a, a little quick little vlog on. But the thing with this bike that I wanted to talk about really quick before we get into today's topic, as you saw in the title, we're going to talk about uh, the RC390 versus other 300cc bikes. Uh, but the thing I wanted to talk about really quick is, man, I don't know what's going on with this bike, but uh, in first gear, kind of cruising around here, I think it might be a fueling issue or a clutch issue, I don't know, but I have stalled this bike more than any other bike I've ever owned. Um, I've been in like low speed situations in first gear and it just dies. So I don't know what's going on with it, but I might go take it to get it checked out. But anyways, today, let's jump on the bike and start this properly. Today, we are gonna be chatting about the RC390 versus its rivals like the R3, the Ninja 400, those kinds of bikes. Zach and Ari actually did a great video like shooting out all the different beginner bikes. You can go check that out if you want to, but I want to give my opinion as someone who formerly owned an R3 and I've ridden tons of different like uh, small displacement sport bikes and now I own a KTM RC390 as part of our giveaway situation. I also just realized that I could have taken my front camera that I just had this here, but that's okay. But yeah, I want to discuss what's different about it. So let's get started. So yeah, the thing I was talking about first gear was like, if you just like, if you rev the bike and like you have your, f like your finger just ever so out on the clutch, you could quickly just stall it. I've stalled this bike at least 15 times, which is uh, perhaps a testament to my riding abilities. I'm not really sure, but I've never stalled a bike as much as this. So I kind of think it's the bike, but let's go. So we are on, boy, what's this road called? Country Club Road, something like that. It's a road up here in DFW. It's really nothing too special. DFW doesn't really have great roads to ride on. Um, oh boy, I could have gone. I'm going to be behind this guy the whole time. Oh my god, why? That's okay. DFW doesn't really have a whole bunch of twisty options, but this is one of the better roads that we have, and it's a little bit closer to me than some of the other offerings, so that makes it better. Um, so, I'd like to start off this video. I don't really have a plan. Sometimes before I go on these vlogs, I kind of write out what I'm going to talk about and then have like a bit of an action plan of uh, what we're going to do when we get there, but uh, today I just want to talk of really off the cuff and, and just kind of describe my experiences with both bikes, uh, the R3 and its rivals versus the RC390, because I used to think that the RC was pretty similar to those other bikes. I had never ridden one before. Uh, before I, I actually test rode one like 2016, realized how different it was, but after owning this one for a little bit, I'm starting to realize just how different it really actually is. Um, so the very first thing I'd like to uh, bring up for how different these two bikes are and just how different the RC is from every other bike in the class is its ergonomics package. So just yesterday, I was test riding and finalizing the sale of my new 675R, uh, which if you guys don't believe me, go check Instagram. But anyways, I jumped on that bike and I you know, was expecting to be shocked by how you know aggressive the ergonomics package is. I've owned two of them, so I wasn't like, you know, super surprised when I got on it, but it had been a minute since I'd been on it. But to be honest, I rode the RC to the dealership to go try out the, the uh, 675R, and I wasn't really that, uh, like the RC is actually not that different than the 675R. Uh, I'll put up a quick little thing about the two bikes here really quick. Um, riding around the Daytona, obviously it's a, it's like a purpose-built race bike, right? Like it's totally different, but the ergonomics themselves, the rider triangle, 
other than my feet being a little bit further up and my hands being a little bit further down, uh, the RC is really pretty similar. And that's the big difference, I think, between the RC390 and other bikes in this class. It is uh, much, much, much more sporty than something like the R3. Now, here's something where they're really, really similar. Um, the power they make, I feel like this bike is pretty much just as fast as the R3. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a meaningful difference of how much faster it feels. The only thing that matters, though, is its mid-range punch. Because it's a single, you really feel it a lot more. You really feel how uh, it's a lot more torquey in the mid-range, but, you know, comparing power to power, like peak horsepower and that kind of stuff, um, this bike feels super similar. So I would say if you're comparing the two bikes, you're not gonna jump on the RC and be like, wow, it's so much faster. Cause it's really not, you know, it's a pretty similar little uh, power package to the R3. Um, at least I, in, in my memory of owning the R3, this feels about as fast as it. I don't think it's a super big difference. Um, one thing that I also feel is really different is, so there's, there's two like kind of like verticals to this, I would say. It's kind of like the build quality does feel nicer. It does feel like a nicer bike than the R3, but not like so much nicer. You guys also have to remember this bike is sold at pretty much the same price point as the R3. Uh, I got this one for 5,100 bucks right out the door, which is pretty cool. Um, and my R3 I bought brand new because I was super dumb and I didn't negotiate a deal on it. So I paid like six grand for it because I'm a very stupid person and it was my first bike. Uh, but this bike feels, you know, pretty much like maybe like 20% nicer than the R3 in terms of its components. Like the adjustable levers that come stock are really cool. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, you know, it's, it's little touches here and there. I think the dash could be a little bit nicer. Like I've seen the new R3's dash and it looks a lot nicer than this KTM RC 390's. Uh, but, you know, the weird thing is though, even though the perceived build quality is higher, at least in my mind, um, this bike has some really weird quirks um and it's so funny because like so many european bikes like fall into this trap but boy this bike has so many weird little quirks about it man like it's like i was saying the the weird like you know first gear stalling issue the fact that the side stand you have to pull up the peg to then pull it down um like the just the general layout of the dash is really odd you really can't see your rpms very well um I really wish instead of like a giant miles per hour readout here, that was like the tack and then the miles per hour was like smaller over here or something. It's not very intuitive to read. Um, so I think that's the other really, really big difference about it. Uh, suspension wise as well, this is I think where the RC really shines in terms of its proper kind of sport bike nature. Um, the RC comes equipped, if I remember correctly, with WP suspension, the KYBs, what does this thing have? I might pull off and take a look because I actually don't know, which seems kind of silly that I own this bike and I don't know what suspension it has on it, but I, I really don't. Um, but anyways, regardless of what type of suspension it is, the one thing I can tell you is it is much, much, much more stiff than the R3 uh, and any of the other beginner bikes I've tried out. You jump on it and you really feel it's got a really, really sporting intention to it. When you jump on the brakes, you don't have nearly as much dive as you do on the R3. Like when you really get on the brakes on this bike, it uh, it doesn't really feel like it's going to, you know, dive a bunch and kind of wiggle and, you know, buckle under pressure or whatever. Uh, but I think that's also due to the fact, beyond the suspension being stiffer, is the RC390 comes stock with, with much grippier radial tires as opposed to the R3's uh, bias ply tires that it comes with. Now, I don't know if the new version of the R3 has those uh, same bias ply tires on him, but they were a really big limiting factor on the R3 being able to perform meaningfully on the street. I actually upgraded to Diablo Rosso 3s or 2s uh, on my little R3, and it makes a world of difference. It completely transforms the character of the bike. You really feel like you have the grip to do whatever you need to, and you can have a ton of fun with it. Um, and, and that's cool that the RC comes with that kind of stuff stock, you know? That's the big feature of the RC, I think, is the fact that from the factory, you're getting tons of components that are ready to go. Um, and it's funny because the, the sort of 
term du jour of the KCM is ready to race, right? Which I think is a, a really cool little thing about it. Um, let me pull off here and see what suspension this bike has, because I really don't know. Maybe I can see. You guys might find this really silly, but I, I genuinely, I forgot. I think it's WPs like the Duke. Let's see if I can see on here. It doesn't say. It just says endurance. I don't know what that means. I gotta talk about these two. That's a big selling point for me. Well, I can't see what the suspension is, so we're gonna have to Google it. Well, these are all parts to buy for it. And oh, hey, I'm ranking on Google. That's pretty cool. When you type in KTM RC390 suspension, I'm right there. That's really cool. Uh, dang, can I just... Because I know the Duke has WP, the new Dukes have WP suspension. I don't know which this one... I'm just going to go to the actual site itself. Let's see. Wow, dude, on Google, I rank... Wow, these three of these videos are me. And you just type in RC390 on Google for the videos. That is awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. That's super cool. Okay. We're doing this together, guys. Yeah, it's a WP. I knew it was. Okay, so the front's a WP upside down 43 millimeter, and the rear is a w WP mono shock. Um, I, f I figured. I didn't want to speak out of turn and, and not tell you guys what it actually was, but I figured it was a WP. So that makes a really big difference. This bike feels a lot more sporty than the R3 because of its stiffer suspension. Um, what does suck, though, is unlike many super sports and super bikes, this isn't adjustable. So you don't have any rebound or compression or preload or anything in the front. But you do have preload in the rear, so you can take a tool, twist that around, set your sag correctly, and, and have a fun time. Um, but yeah, these, this is the big difference on this bike, man. These tires here that it comes with, these Metzlers, these are great. These feel really good and really appropriate for this bike on the street. Whereas the R3, uh, man, I don't know, those bias buys it comes with, they're not very good. Hopefully they don't sell with those anymore. Actually, have a proper radial tire on there. Um, a big thing I see a lot of guys ask about... Okie dokie, a little RC. Uh, a, a really big thing I see guys ask about, can I make this U-turn here? I probably can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna waddle my way over here because I'm lazy. Whee! <laughs> a big thing I see guys ask about is the front brake on this bike. Um, and that, that is a really big difference as well. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's a Bybee system versus, uh, just like a regular, I don't know what brake caliper comes on the R3. It might just be a Nissan, like, rebranded little Yamaha caliper or no name or something like that, but, uh, this bike has tons of brake feel, man, and it can really brake a lot harder than you imagine. Um, at least for me anyways, I was pleasantly surprised by this bike's braking potential. I haven't even taken it out to the track and really explored it or tried it out, but even on the street, I'm really pleasantly surprised with how it brakes. I think the way you can think about the RC390 and bikes in this class is that they are, uh, they're a lot like Miatas. If you guys are into cars, if you're checking out this channel, uh, maybe before you've bought a bike, because I know a lot of you are. Um, R3s and the KTM RC390, it's a lot like a Miata. I mean, you can feel it in the way the engine is tuned and the kind of lightweight and the flickability of the chassis. Um, it really, the characteristic of the engines also feel like a sort of souped up little four cylinder. It, they don't feel like insane, you know what I mean? Like, they don't feel like they're gonna bite your head off like a race bike would or like a super sport or something like that. They feel so much more approachable. And which is why I mentioned in my video, should you ride a small displacement bike? I think this class and this type of bike has so much to offer to any kind of motorcyclist. Like for me, for example, I've been riding for about four and a half years or so. Um, if I did the math correctly, and I'm, I'm not like a, I'm not a super experienced rider by any means. Uh, I've done all of five track days, and uh, you know have experienced quite a few different motorcycles. But I'm not a professional or anything. You know, I'm just like a guy who likes sport bikes, who is avid about the craft of riding and wants to get better. Um, and I've owned an FC09 and Daytona and all kinds of pretty high-powered sport bikes. But man, this thing is just a blast. You, you just feel like. The margin for error is massive on this bike. You feel like you can crack it wide open at the wrong time, and it's not really gonna go that bad for you, right? Versus something like an FC09 with all that torque. If you if you whip the throttle on FC09 at the wrong time, like I just did there, if I just if you just bump it like that, it's not gonna be fun. So I think there's so much to be 
had from this category of motorcycles. I think everyone should own a small bike just to really appreciate what their big bikes can do. Because I think that's something that happens to people over time. They feel like they have to keep progressing through the ranks. They'll, they'll have a small bike for a year, a mid-sized bike for a year, and then they, they're on an Aprilia 1100 Tuono, uh, you know, for, for after three years of riding, and they're like, oh, it's okay, it's not quick enough. Guys, that's a fast motorcycle. That's a crazy fast motorcycle. Um, I think having a smaller bike will give you so much more appreciation for just how fast uh, your just sort of normal run-of-the-mill everyday bikes are I mean riding the RC even makes the FCO 7 feel like a rocket ship but the Daytona I test rode yesterday holy crap you know like after you get on one of those after riding one of these you just feel like it's a spaceship it feels awesome you know and that's not to say that it's it's not because I'm an inexperienced rider or anything like that, but it's all about context, you know. You can really appreciate how much better these bigger bikes are when you own a smaller, lighter, more simple bike like this. Like for example, like on the Daytona in the mid range between six and seven thousand, you just wick it. It doesn't feel anything like this. It just feels like it's gonna take flight, and that's such a cool feeling, you know. And you might forget that feeling if you don't ride a smaller bike like this every once in a while. So. I don't know, man. I think there's there's plenty of cases to be made for owning a small bike like this. And I think the fact that they've been branded as beginner bikes is really silly. I would love to start a campaign where we rebrand these as just... They're small, fun bikes. That's it. They're not, you know, like beginner-only bikes. They just happen to be motorcycles with smaller engines, which gives them totally different characteristics and feel, you know? Like, we can go in here, just dip it in. The RC really makes you focus on the craft of riding, you know? Like, that's what's really fun about it. So anyways, guys, that's kind of going to sum up my thoughts on the R3 and Ninja 300 versus the KTM RC390. Uh, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe, smash that like button, drop me a comment, and let me know if you've had experiences with both platforms. Um, I think I was able to cover most of everything that I needed to both in terms of the really big differences between these bikes. But let me know if I missed anything in the comment section. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later.